We've got two days worth of practice to catch up on, so let's hop into it on this edition of the Locked on Sun Devils podcast. You are Locked on Sun Devils, your daily podcast on the Arizona State Sun Devils. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to the Locked on Sun Devils podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day my name is richie bradshaw and i will be your guide for everything arizona state sun devils thank you guys as always for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day and a shout out as well to my everydayers who are here every day wherever you're getting your podcast hit like subscribe and turn on notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content and stay in touch with all of our content by following me on twitter slash x at richie brats 36 and the podcast at lo underscore sun devils First of all, I apologize for no episode this morning. I have been so burnt out, very literally, from the sun that I fell asleep on my couch at 6.30 last night and woke up at 6.30 this morning for practice. So, I mean, I just, the the sun has wiped me out. If you guys are on YouTube, you can see that my face is very flush. I've been getting burned even with the uh, sunscreen that I'm applying. So, my apologies. I'm getting you guys two days worth now. We should be back on track tomorrow, and we'll discuss what we're going to talk about tomorrow towards the end of the podcast. But for right now, I've got to catch you up on Tuesday's practice. And since we're here, we're going to talk about Wednesday's practice as well. And they were eventful days, especially for the defensive side of the football, where Arizona State continues to kind of flex its muscles and show that they are going to be a much more quality unit than maybe we thought initially. So let's go ahead and hop into the defensive side of the football. We'll take a look at Tuesday. Starting off uh, with the uh, with the first and second team, so Michael Matus and Clayton Smith were getting a lot of time at one starting edge spot, and across from them was BJ Green and Garen Stansbury that were getting time inside. Nothing changed too much. Deshaun Mallory, Anthony Cooper were the starters both yesterday and today for the team. Um, other than that, there really hasn't been too much on the defensive line changing. On Tuesday, Juju Mitchell, the transfer from Tennessee, and Caleb McCullough, we're starting at linebacker today. There was more action from Will Schaefer at linebacker and Caleb McCullough returning as well. In the defensive backfield, again, it's looked very similar compared to what we've been seeing. Roe Torrance, the undisputed number one corner there. Mason Williams and Ed and uh, Ed Woods continued, continued to battle it out with each other for the number two spot. Tuesday was a lot more Mason Williams out there. On Wednesday, it felt like they were kind of interchangeable. And Ed Woods, I'm going to talk about here in just a minute, had a really impactful day as well. In the nickel, Jordan Clark has been getting the work, although he has been working out with the safeties. That is something I wanted to mention. And then at the safety position, Xavier Alford has been a constant in the secondary right now. He is for sure in pen, one of the starters based off of what we've seen through three days of camp what we've heard all off season and just based off his potential, but potential in general, you can pen in Xavier Alford to one of the state starting safety spots. If he is good to go for this year. And then you've seen some Shamari Simmons. You've seen some Montana Warren for rotating as the other first team. Chris Edmonds, my dude has been placed on more of the second team opportunities, which is what it is when you've got the depth in the secondary. I still anticipate Chris Edmonds to have a really good year. That's the depth charts that we got to look at on the defensive side of the football. There have been a handful of turnovers by the team. Uh, There was an interception, I believe, by Shamari Simmons on uh, Tuesday's practice that was taken back for a touchdown. Um, There was overall really good defensive production. There was... There was really good coverage. The pass rush is very lively. There was a handful of guys that got sacks yesterday. Uh, Today, Tristan Monday recorded two sacks in in some opportunities on the defensive line. On the interior, he was able to generate pressure. Uh, Sam Benjamin also had a sack today from the interior. CJ Fight has looked really good. Deshaun Mallory is a constant at defensive tackle. He's another dude who you can pen in as one of the starters for the team. Uh, In the secondary, Montana Warren is just so versatile, man. Like, they can do so many different things with him. And I really look forward to continuing to see everything that they've got in the folds for him as a freshman. Looking at the offensive side of the football. So, 
On Tuesday, you had uh, Trenton Bourget running with the ones as well as on Wednesday as he was on Monday. But with that being said, even though he's been running with the ones for the start of all three practices, there's been a lot of Drew Pine getting involved. Drew Pine has had a lot of snaps, a lot of throws, a lot of opportunities. He's looked okay. He is responsible for the two interceptions that were thrown on Tuesday's practice. Now, one of them was a deflected football that maybe should have been a catch, but there was one that he also just kind of airmailed over to the defense. As a whole, I feel like Drew Pine has probably been, I won't call him the most over underwhelming quarterback because I'm focusing a lot more on the defense right now. And we haven't seen too much Jaden Rashada. He did get some time today during the uh, tempo drills towards the end of practice. And Rashada looked pretty solid. He was getting the ball down the field and uh, he, he's got that touch, man. Like he just throws a beautiful deep ball, but getting back on topic because I could just spiral out of here talking about everything I've seen, looking at the first and second teams, uh, not much has really changed across the offensive line going from left to right. It has been Isaiah glass at left tackle, Max Ionaker at left guard or Siani Finau has also been starting at left guard. Uh, Lee Fontanu has been the starting center. Julie Ramos has been the starting right guard. And Emmett Bully has been the starting right tackle. Makes sense for the left guard spot to be kind of back and forth. I believe that um, that Max Ionaker was the starter on Monday. So going back and forth between him and Sione Finau makes sense to be able to get them those snaps, Emmett Bully still being at right tackle. I'm curious if that's more to do with him being the veteran because a lot of people regard Aaron Frost as one of the best offensive linemen on this roster. He's also returning from injury and trying to get back to 100%. I'm curious if Bully ends up holding down that position long term, but worth noting he is the starter. Lee Fontanu, definitely the better center here. Ben Bray has had quite a few poor snaps that have led to would be sacks. I don't think the defense has been able to hop on a turnover, but you also have to realize these guys aren't going to be throwing their bodies on the line for practice. So, but like yesterday on Tuesday, there was two really bad snaps. Today, there was a really bad snap. Ben Bray has been a part of it. And this isn't Ben Bray slander at all, but he definitely looks like the second string guy behind Lee Fontanu. Outside of that, uh, at the skill position, guys, Jalen Connors, tight end one, not a surprise. Messiah Swenson and Bryce Pierre are splitting time behind him. Elijah Badger has been the wide receiver one. Xavier Guillory has been the wide receiver two. And Giovanni Sanders has been the slot receiver. None of that is a surprise. This is all stuff that we pretty much knew coming into camp. At the running back position, DeCarlos Brooks has actually been uh, one of the starting running backs the last two days for per the uh, practice reports. But Cameron Scadabo, of course, is rotating in quite a bit and is going to be more than likely the, the uh, bell cow of the offense if the Sun Devils are to have one. That is basically rounding out the starting teams that we've seen. Um, there's, there's lots of rotation right now, and we have to remember we're only three days into practice. So there's still a lot of time yet to decide who's going to be definitive first team, who's going to be definitive second team, all that good stuff. But... Through these practices we've seen so far, I would tell you that there is definitely some players that are standing out more than others and really starting to assert themselves. And we'll get into touching on them a little bit more in just one moment. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have the best access to qualified candidates available. And that's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. It's really quick. It's a very simple process to get yourself set up to find those candidates, and you can do it in minutes. Once you do that, add your job and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. And of course, it's never been more important to get the right crew than right now. It's why small businesses rank LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free 
at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions will apply. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I appreciate you hanging out with me and going through some practices. Remember, we're free and available on all platforms. Hit like, subscribe, turn on notifications. You won't want to miss tomorrow's episode, which we'll touch on towards the end of the podcast. Let's talk about some standouts. So there have been quite a few guys that are really starting to assert themselves. The first name that comes to mind is Montana Warren. Warren is an incoming three-star defensive back from the state of Texas that Arizona State was able to snipe from TCU when Brian Carrington came over to Arizona State to be the defensive backs coach. I was having a conversation with a good friend of mine, and we were talking about how funny it is that Montana Warren and another Texas player that I'll talk about here in just a moment have looked so good. And we just laughed. And my buddy said, you know, if they had played anywhere else in the country, these are four star guys. But because they played in Texas, they're three stars. So you look at Warren and you look at I'll, I'll go and spoil it. CJ fight, who everyone knows I love. These guys are just so much better than what everybody else seems to perceive them as because they played in Texas where there's just so much great football in the South in general, let alone in the biggest state in, uh, in the 48 that are located here. But they truly have outperformed their class ranking. Montana Warren has been all over the place. He's been with the first team. He's been in the nickel. He's been as a deep safety. And wherever he is, he's finding the football very quickly. He was doing very well in spring practices, and he's carried that momentum into fall camp so far. This is a guy who just feels like he's going to be on the football field one way or another. And I have a really sneaky, strong suspicion that by the end of the 2023 campaign, he might be looking at some all Pac-12 freshman mentions here. Uh, CJ Fight, of course, the other guy that I'm hyping up. He is just so disruptive, man. He's so violent off the snap. The quickness that he has is really good, but the brute strength and power that he has are what really stands out to you as a guy who is just able to manhandle everybody that is in front of him. He's so impressive in everything that he's able to do, and I truly believe that he's going to end up finding a really good niche with the team. I don't know that he's a full-time starter in year one, but he's not a guy that you want to just leave on the bench. Arizona State is going to understand that in their best interest, they should be getting number 99 on the field as much as possible. I could talk about a handful of other guys that I've already talked about before, like BJ Green and Clayton Smith, but I don't want to just, you know, feed a fed horse. Crew Jackson has looked really good the last two days uh, playing in the linebacker position for the team. He, of course, a transfer from Kansas State as kind of like that linebacker safety hybrid that people have talked about for a little while. And he definitely fits that role very, very well. He looks like a potential starter down the road. Arizona State has some really good depth at linebacker this year with Trey Brown, Juju Mitchell, Will Schaefer, James Jonkum, Caleb McCullough. It's going to be difficult for Crew Jackson to get onto the football field. But in the same breath, if he continues doing what he's doing, just like what I said from Montana Warren and CJ Fight. You're just going to have a hard time keeping him off the football field. He flashes. He's athletic. He's quick. He's able to find the football. He does everything that you want out of him. And he just looks really good. Offensively, I would tell you that Isaiah Glass is really starting to come around. I'm buying into his hype, which is funny because everyone knows that I've been pretty much a hater of his for at least the last year or so. But I feel like he's definitely been the most consistent offensive lineman. And a lot of a lot of people are believing in him to finally take that step forward. I want to be part of that as well. Kyson Brown really stood out today. He had a couple really long runs. I felt like he might have been the best running back on the team, at least for Wednesday's practice. Like I said, he had a couple long runs and some breakaways. Uh, there was there was a lot of focus on running game in Wednesday's practice compared to the first two days of practice. And for the most part, I felt like the defensive line controlled the line of scrimmage. But when they gave up a long run, more often than not, it was number 14. That was getting a long run and doing a lot with the opportunities that he's got. 
And we have to remember that Kyson's probably not going to get on the football field too much this year because of how good Tevin White, Cameron Scadabo, and DeCarlos Brooks appear to be. And speaking of those guys, Tevin White looks like a breakout. And I'm really, really excited for what Tevin White's going to be able to give you this year. Would not surprise me one bit if by the end of the year, Arizona State had a committee type of approach with Scadabo and with Tevin White as the lead backs there. Tevin White, you could just tell that he's been working on all sorts of different things from being a pass catcher to just hitting the ball, uh, the ball, hitting the hole harder. Like he, he definitely has just taken this interest in becoming a better running back this year. And there's a really good chance it pays off for him. Very excited for what he can bring to the table for you. Mel Constable has also looked pretty good. Uh, he is going to get a lot of work out of the slot more than anywhere else, but he is creating separation. He is making really good grabs and he's, he's finding the holes in the zone defenses and able to, like I said, separate from whoever is lined up on him and man, he just looks like he's going to be able to find his way onto the football field. And then finally, I want to mention Jake Smith. Jake Smith has looked really good too. He, he's just in an interesting situation for, whether or not him and Xavier and Alfred will be available for this year in terms of like the transfer stuff that's going on. But, you know, cross that bridge when you get to it. In the meantime, Jake Smith has looked exceptional. Him and Mel Constable have looked like the best receivers that aren't named Elijah Badger or Xavier Guillory. Bottom line, there's a lot of weapons on this offense. And if Isaiah Glass does take the step forward that many are believing and hoping he will be able to do, Arizona State could be in a very good situation offensively this year. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Wherever you get your podcast, hit like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and make us your first listen of the day. For tomorrow's edition of the show, you won't want to miss it. We got some politics to talk about, and I'll be sure to fill you in as we wrap this episode up. Here are some storylines for the remainder of this week. So we got two more practices this week. We should have Monday, Tuesday, next week. And then they'll be heading up to Tonta Zona for Wednesday through Friday, I believe. I'm not sure off the top of my head because I don't have the schedule in front of me, but that's what sounds right. So this is this is going to be a really interesting last couple of days of practice here. There's, there's so much going on at the quarterback position. And Trenton Bourget has looked really good. And Drew Pine has been up and down. The little bit that we got to see from Jaden Rashada today, he looks like a freshman, and that's not a bad thing at all. He just looks like a freshman. He had some really great moments, and he had some head-scratching moments. Borgay has looked pretty confident. I'm really interested to see if he can continue to stave off his competition and continue to really start to separate himself in becoming the quarterback one for this team. It's not a coincidence that he's getting team one snaps. However, it is interesting that Drew Pine is starting to get more and more and more and more opportunities here. I'm wondering whether or not this is going to impact uh, Borgay moving forward, but Borgay has looked sharp. Uh, really curious to see how the trenches end up working out for Arizona State. Um, I was talking to Joey Ramos again today, and Ramos was telling me you know, that he understands that a lot of people have highlighted the offensive line as a weak point and, you know, totally guilty. I have absolutely highlighted them as a weak point as well. And he told me, he said, you know, that that's whiteboard material for us. We put it up every day and we want to, we want to prove a lot of people wrong. We want to prove the doubters wrong. We want to be the best offensive line. And, you know, we, we feel like we have a lot to prove and with him and Isaiah glass and Aaron frost and Lee Fontanu and, uh, Sione, um, oh man, I totally forgot his last name. Um, where are you? It's, uh, for now, Sione for now. That's why I thought I didn't want to butcher it though, even though I probably did. There, there are pieces here for the offensive line to be very quality. And it wouldn't surprise me if, especially in an offense that is just so good at getting the ball out quickly, they could definitely be better than what we are anticipating, but it's going to be really important for the next few days for them to continue to find a way to stand out because today in the run game, I thought the defense really controlled the line of scrimmage and it, they, they did it with so many guys. Like there was so much rotation today and we were seeing guys like um, Blazin Wanawong 
Juan O'Long get on the field. Ashley Williams was getting on the field. Jaron Stansbury is getting a lot of snaps lately. Like ASU is starting to really rotate their defenders right now. And the guys in the front have had a pretty, pretty, I wouldn't say easy time, but they've, they've been winning the matchups pretty consistently. And there's a lot of stuffs. Now, when there wasn't a stuff, it felt like it was a long run that was getting broken off. But overall, I feel like the the trenches is just going to be a really important place to watch for Arizona State. I mentioned earlier I wanted to talk about Ed Woods. I didn't so much list him in my standouts, but what I did want to point out is that Ed Woods appears to be taking on a really important leadership role with the team. He was helping out the coaches today during uh, defensive back drills and like kind of telling the younger guys what they needed to do, what they need to look for, how to execute. And that brings me to like one of my other storylines is like looking in the secondary, especially how are you going to separate these veteran guys from these young guys? Because you've got, you've got Montana Warren, especially is the one that you're so interested to see what they end up doing with him, how his situation works out, all that good stuff. Is, is he a nickel safety? Is he, a free safety is the second team. Is it going to end up being first team? There's a lot going on in the secondary. How are you going to figure out Isaiah Johnson's role in the secondary as a redshirt sophomore? There's, there's a lot going on and there's a lot of competition. It's a very good thing. You're just curious how everything rolls out. And I think the set, the, the secondary especially is so intriguing to me. The spot opposite row Torrance it's really been between two guys with Ed Woods and, and uh, Mason Williams. How is that going to end up shaking out? We'll maybe have a better idea by the rest of the week, but I just feel like until then, it's just going to be how great is number six going to look compared to number 10? Like it, it's just going to be a really good slugfest. Offensively, I think you just want to see the turnover start to co- uh, cut down a little bit. The defense has definitely been able to take advantage of some poor decisions, but the offense has so much potential that I feel like eventually they're going to be able to really step up, dominate some practices. The last two days, so Monday I felt was really dominated by the defense. The last two days, though, it feels like it's been split about 50-50, maybe 40-60 in favor of the defense, but the, uh, the offense has definitely started to click a little more over the last two days. And I'm really interested to see if they can end the week doing the same thing. Bottom line, this is a really exciting young team. That's got a lot of different parts moving on. Love what the coaches are doing. Love how they're getting to the players. It feels like this has been a very productive three days of practice. Even though it's really hot outside, these guys are a hundred percent dialed in and you know that they want to be there and you know that they want to fight and be the best guys that they could possibly be. So I'm really excited to see them. What are the storylines you guys are monitoring? What do you want me to check out while I'm out there? Leave a comment on YouTube or hit me up on Twitter slash X at RichieBrats36 and the podcast LO underscore Sundles. I appreciate you guys for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day. Remember, wherever you're getting those podcasts, hit like, subscribe, turn on notifications. Tomorrow's edition of the show, we got a little bit of politics to talk about. We're talking about a potential move to the Big 12. We're talking about all the rumors about Arizona and Arizona leaving the Pac-12, Washington, Oregon, Cal and Stanford leaving the the Pac-12. And then we also got to talk about the name change to the stadium. It'll be a little bit of a change of pace since we've been doing practices all week. But since we got to do both today, I figure it's a perfect time to be able to talk about those. We'll be back tomorrow to talk about that. I'll see you guys then. Until next time, you keep it locked right here on Locked On.